What's going on, everybody? Happy Friday and welcome in to the Fantasy Alarm MLB DFS Game Day Playbook Preview Show for the last time this week. Uh, as we come to the end of the season, our DFS podcast is also winding down as well. As you guys know, we've already cut the live stream um, out. Uh, we will run this podcast all the way through the end of the regular season, so uh, you can count on us to be here whether you watch or listen in the evening, whether you watch or listen in the morning, whether you watch or listen in the afternoon. We will be here delivering these shows. We have a 12-game main slate on tap for the Friday uh, baseball, for Friday baseball. If you guys are new here, uh, please hit the subscribe button. Please uh, drop us a like. It helps a lot in the YouTube algorithm. Um, it helps a lot with the growth of the channel and fantasy alarm in general. So with all that housekeeping aside, uh, obviously you see the names on the screen. I'm James Grande. You can follow me at the real, at the underscore real underscore Grande. And I'm joined by Henry Wilson. You can follow him on the old X machine at Henry 13, Wilson 13. Henry, happy Friday. What's going on, bro? Yeah, happy Friday. It's uh, going well. You know, we're full into September baseball. I love it. I, like, not a lot of crazy playoff races, but, like, watching this Tigers push has been awesome. They're super yep. fun. Otani might be the first 50-50 player by the time you're even watching this, potentially. So, like, yep. a lot of fun stuff. It's it's great getting to the end of the season here, but a lot of, a lot of excitement still. Yeah, has checked off one of those boxes, Shohei has. So we'll see about the, the second one. Um, obviously, he would have to go, you know, in a lengthy spell to not get it. I think all of us are assuming he's selling out for it. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, I would probably do the same. Um, what are I, I've heard a couple different takes. Uh, I've heard that 50-50 is just an arbitrary thing that we kind of make up. Do you think it's a big deal uh, if someone goes 50-50 or does it like, should we be celebrating like the fact that he's like 49-49 or 48-48? Like, it's just the fact that it's a round number, right? It's 50. Oh yeah, totally. And the fact like, okay, no one's ever done it before. We hit the, yeah, sure. It's, if he didn't hit the 50th, this would still be just equally as impressive a season. Right. But right. I still think it should be celebrated. Like the Agreed. fact that he's like 50, 50 is insane. So yeah, obviously the actual like cutoff just being this nice <laughs> round even number of 50 is kind of arbitrary, but that doesn't take away from how freaking awesome it is. <laughs> Agreed. Um, let's dive into the slate where uh, I believe Shohei Otani exists. Let's see. Let's make sure. Yep. Our first baseman outfield eligible Shohei Otani because um, that's naturally what he plays. Um, if you guys are tuning in for the first time, we will go position by position. So we you know, 12 games. We'll start off at the pitcher spot. Uh, interesting 9K tier here, I'd say. Um, Corbin Burns, 9,700 against the smoking hot uh, Detroit Tigers. Zach Gallen, 93 against the Milwaukee Brewers, who just clinched their division. Um, George Kirby is moved up. I believe he was supposed to start Saturday, now starting Friday. Um, that's a fun pitching matchup, Kirby versus DeGrom. Um, Joe Musgrove gets the White Sox. I'm sure a lot of ownership will go there. And Garrett Cole rounds out the 9K tier. What's your interest level in anyone 9K and above here, Henry? Yeah, I I really like two of them, and it's actually the bottom two. It, I'm going right past those top three who all, I think, just have concerns that scare me. And Joe Musgrove's my number one here. He's, again, we have, like, you look at those last five, it's three gems, two kind of duds. But, like, the three gems have been amazing, and he's pitching against the White Sox. So he's the clear number one here just because he has been pitching well. We know he's got crazy strikeout upside, and it's the Chicago White Sox. Like, right. I think this is a no-brainer number one for me. I agree. Um, and, and the ownership's going to play out that way, as it yeah. always does, right? No matter who's the pitcher, it's the White Sox. So he will be popular. Um, I agree. I do think, you know, despite the whole intentionally walk debacle and whatever happened after that, I do think Eric Cole is a great play, um, just given the, the the ceiling he has in terms of strikeouts. You know, this has not been the same Garrett Cole as years past. He was the best pitcher in baseball last year. Obviously, the arm thing coming into the year has really derailed this season, but he has been good outside of some blowups. Two of them yeah. have been against Boston. So, you know, um, 
that's the I, thing. I, like he's been really good recently, and Boston has just always had his number. He just I don't know if it's a mental thing because like it's such a large sample at this point. It is. I mean, it is. If you're walking, if you're walking a guy with a one hitter in the fourth inning, it is. Yep. There's no other ex- explanation other than it's mental. Yeah, exactly. And so I think a lot of people will be off of him. I think the ownership will be lower because they see what he just did. And honestly, like I'm willing to jump back because I'm not going to hold that against him too much because I think it's just a team he struggles with. And now he goes out and faces Oakland. I don't think he'll have any problem bouncing back and being back to what he was doing before that Red Sox start. It was just a player. It was literally just Rafael Devers. And, and now... that's what it's been for him. Like the whole, like all of his Red Sox struggles have been like 90% Rafael Devers who has yeah. just owned him. Yeah. And he, and he's literally asked, was asked uh, in a question with the media, like who's the one active player that gives you the most uh, issues. And he literally paused, looked at the reporter and said, Rafael Devers. And like, we all knew it. That reporter knew it. That was a yeah. bait. That was a bait question. Um, yeah. But I, I agree. I would. I have no problem going right back to the well. Of Garrett Cole, nine K, and I, I agree on your on a, your assessment of the of the top tier. I think the other three guys have tough spots. So yep. uh, Musgrove and Cole are the cheapest, and uh, they have the best spots. When we dip below the nine thousand dollar price range, uh, what stands out to you in the eight K tier, if anything? I think another position that I look at, like you can obviously play Charlie Morton. It's been a, a roller coaster ride with him. Um, I, I go to the bottom of the list kind of, or ish bottom ish of the list. Uh, Michael Walker at 82 stands out to me uh, against San Francisco. They're striking out more than anybody else in baseball right now against righties. What about you um, in the $8,000 range? Yeah. Michael Walker is the exact same name that stuck out to me. I just think he's been pitching really well. We've been seeing strikeouts from him and giants have been pretty rough. Like they're yes. striking out a ton. Their offense has not looked good. Uh, so yeah, he was also like the middle tier. There's nothing wrong with them, but just none of them really excite me. And I think Waka has that upside and the good matchup here. Um, and so he jumped out to me. I think you could try to take a shot on Jacob deGrom here with like the discount. I wasn't really in on him at the 8,500 with the limitations. He's still going to be limited, but hopefully less limited. Like hopefully we get a little higher pitch count that maybe can get him to the five innings. Uh, and look, he looked good still. Like it wasn't amazing, but if you watched it, he... Like some of his pitches were still insane. Uh, he was looking pretty solid. So if he can go out a little longer today against Seattle, the upside is still pretty good at 8,100. So I don't disagree. Here's where I'm, I don't disagree with like most of what you said, just like Jacob DeGrom, the pitcher. Mm-hmm. I I still think that it's something I'm not comfortable with price-wise. Sure. Um, and I think what they did with Kumar Rocker kind of, told me what all I needed to know for these last couple starts. Cause like both guys are coming off kind of the same path of injury, right? Like both guys got Tommy John, both guys have returned late in the season. Um, Kumar rocker on Thursday made his second start 70 pitches again. And like they, they didn't send him out for the fourth inning. And I know it was like a labored three innings, but like if there was going to be any, if there was any necessity for it, or if there's anything that mattered for Texas, more than like just getting these guys innings and then getting them to next year, then maybe I just don't see a, a path to Jacob deGrom. He went 61 pitches. No, that's I fair. Mean, they, like 70? they don't need to win games. So no. like their most important thing right now is having deGrom healthy for 2025. So they Correct. for sure will not be pushing him. So yeah, yeah. 70. I, I would say I'd be surprised if he, and like he threw three and two thirds, they took him out of the game, right? 61 pitches. I would yeah. be shocked if he, went past 70 pitches just like oh, yeah. i agree i think it's going to be like they push him up to 70 and it's going to be a pretty hard stop at 70 no matter yeah, what that, that's why I, like i get it the matchup is is great and all that um in terms of strikeouts but it's just too risky um on a on a big slate for me um sub eight thousand dollars i mean there's interesting names down here obviously i don't know like what there is that we want to use like Obviously, seeing Justin Verlander at 78 is kind of like a sticker shock. He just hasn't been very good um, overall. And it's a guy that Houston will see where they, if he even slots into the rotation come playoff time. I mean, you you have to think he's on the outside looking in right now. Um, Kyle Gibson, 77. Uh, Herder took a, was part of that no hitter or perfect game into like the ninth inning against Baltimore last time out. 
he's looked really good as kind of their long man or um, he's the, he's not the open, he's the bulk, bulk pitcher most of these games. Uh, Anderson, Crochet, I mean, Crochet's spot is all, as bad as it gets. Like, is there anything in the 7K tier that you would legitimately consider? Yeah, it, it's Brand Herder. Uh, again, coming off of five and two-thirds no hits with eight strikeouts against Baltimore, like yeah. against the team he is now facing. And even if it wasn't for that, like he was pitching well before that. Like this is a pretty good stretch now that he's just yeah. been pitching really well. Um, he's won each of his last five outings. Like yeah. he's getting wins. This Tigers team is playing super well. Uh, so there's a good chance at a win again, even against a really good Baltimore team. Like this Tigers team is unstoppable right now. And Brant Herter is pitching the best that he ever has. Uh, so 7,600, I'm kind of willing to ride this hot streak and think that he keeps dominating. I'd also push back on the part that you said, really good Baltimore. I would also push back on that. They have been struggling. That is fair. Uh, Outside of a walk-off home run from Anthony Santander on Thursday, it has been... It's been pretty ugly. It's been bad. I mean, they. uh, I think they'd be one of the most surprising teams if they get in to win the World Series to me. Yeah. Just given their struggles. Which I wouldn't have thought that would have been the case if you had asked me like three weeks ago. It would have been, no, Baltimore will be fine. They'll be one of the strongest teams going to the postseason. And it's just falling apart and they just look like they don't know how to score runs yep um so I, i'm with you on the herder front i think that's the that's the play i'd go as well um i get the verlander stuff because the angels have been bad against right-handed um pitching and he looked good against them last start but like there's just not a lot of strikeout upside so uh, i think i'd pass on verlander just go to herder uh any of these punts any of these punts, Belozo, Freeland, Mason Black? No chance. No. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. Usually, like, I at least, like, give, like, a slight look and then, like, look away at the $5,500 pitcher. But, yeah, there's not yes. a – there's there's nothing there. Let's head to catcher, a position, uh, you know, that usually provides us value – is there anyone that you would spend up on, like anyone over $4,000? Yeah, I think there's actually more that I would spend up at catcher than there normally is. I think Will Smith against Kyle Freeland, hitting super well. Obviously, Dodgers yep. against Freeland could be a lot. Uh, I also uh, like Salvador Perez here against Black. Uh, he is crushing the ball. And so, That's again, true. another good matchup. And I'd also go to Austin Wells. Uh, yeah. Another good matchup. He continues to hit well, too. Um, so I think all three of those guys, just like good matchups are ones that I, I like their teams today. And so I'm willing to pay in this range for them, even at catcher. Missed opportunity to say he's been hitting wells, but I'll forgive you. And we'll move down, uh, we'll move down the list here. Um, and we'll just act like, you know, you didn't just miss that uh, layup. Um, it's okay. Sorry. That's all right. I picked it. I picked up the pieces there, Henry. Um, sub 4k, <laughs> sub 4k. What do we got? I mean, Hunter Goodman has been. Um, he's been pretty good, man. Uh, he's been hitting some home runs lately. Uh, a lot of them, he, he gets Robleski here. Uh, Higashioka gets the White Sox bullpen. Uh, and I say that because Crochet has obviously been severely limited, and, and then they get him out. Um, Moreno's back. He's looking good at the dish. Like, what do we got for value? Uh, yeah, really, I like all three of those names you you put out. I think Moreno is probably my favorite. He's the one that really stuck yeah. out to me just because, uh, you know, he looked good in his couple of games back. Uh, sure, they were in Coors, so like four hits in Coors, it's not like sure. crazy, but he's just someone that I've always kind of trusted to have a pretty good bat, uh, so I kind of like him at 3,200, uh, but I do think that if you you know wanted to go to like Higashioka has more power upside, Goodman has more power upside, yep. uh, I just think Moreno's probably a safer bet to just like get you some points at a really cheap price. Yeah, very rarely you get a $3,200 catcher that, you know, their primary you know, attribute is hitting. And yeah. I know he hasn't been like amazing this year, but he has last year. He was amazing. And like, you know, he is, he profiles as a, as a very plus, as a plus hitting catcher. So uh, I, I also like $3,200 Gabe Moreno. Um, I'm just like surveying the rest of the list. Like Pajas, Pedro Pajas continues to hit well. Pedro Pajas, 2,700 Ben Lively, probably a lot of, uh, they, they, they did not extend lively much last time out. So I'm assuming that's a lot of guardians bullpen, but 
Mm -hmm. um, has for sure probably play Caratini if he's in the lineup because he's so sure. cheap. But let's go to first. More, more exciting position. Um, up at the top, we have Shohei Otani, obviously, dual position eligibility. Um, $7,100, not afraid to use him in a lefty-lefty spot. You have Bryce in a lefty-lefty spot against a good pitcher and David Peterson. Uh, Christian Walker is back to hitting bombs. Matt Olson is back to hitting multiple bombs. He had two on Thursday. Uh, Pete Alonso has looked good lately. Is there anything specifically over $5,000 you like? Yeah, I really like Matt Olson. Okay. Uh, not just because he's been hitting super well recently. Like, yeah, let's see those two bombs and just it's been a lot more production for uh, like a couple weeks now. He's been looking a lot better. Uh, but beyond that, Beozo is bad. Like, he has some of the worst stuff uh, of any pitcher in baseball this year. Like, he's got nothing. The Braves could put up a lot of runs against him. Uh, so he's he's the standout here for me. I agree. And Matt Olson, of course, is going to get, um, by the end of the year, just based on this last stretch, you're going to be like, oh, 30 and 100 for Matt Olson this year. Pretty pretty yep. good season. It's largely been disappointing, I'd say, but he is going to end up playing every game. He is going to end up hitting 30 home runs and driving in 100 runs. So, yep. uh, so you know, salutes Matt Olson for somehow getting there. Uh, to your point, uh, Valente Belozo this year, 180 ISO allowed to lefties. Expected ISO is 234. Um, yep. So a lot of expected power allowed against him. So he's been a little lucky. I don't expect that luck to continue much here. I fully agree on the Olsen front. We dropped below $5,000. Uh, Freddie Freeman, his price has suffered for really no reason. Um, yeah, 4800 is too cheap for Freddie Freeman. Yeah, I mean, like, obviously he was struggling a little bit with the finger um, or the hand. I forget which one. It, I think it was the finger. Um, yeah. And... He was struggling a little bit when they decided, like, nah, he's just going to play through it. He is not struggling anymore. I mean, back-to-back -back games with stolen bases. He has multi-hit games in three of four. Uh, mm -hmm. He looks really good at the dish. You don't often see 4,800. Um, and also, we've noted this all year. Kyle Freeland on the road, which is absolutely bizarre. Uh, really bad pitcher compared to Kyle Freeland at home. I mean, we're talking about an earned run. 2.2 earned runs higher on the road. His batting average allowed is 60 points higher. You know, I, I'm really not afraid off the Dodgers. Uh, you mentioned it was Will Smith, but like even the lefties in, in Freeman, like, yeah, the, the price stands out. Here. <laughs> yeah. And well, and, and like for Freeman specifically, like obviously Shohei's over 7,000. Mookie's going to be whatever yeah. he's going to be. But 4,800 for Freeman, that stands out because we have not gotten that much this year. Exactly. Yeah. Like, sure. Maybe you can't pay all the way up for those. Yeah. Bets and Otani, but a lot of these other really good bats in their lineup are not crazy expensive here. Right. Um, Josh Naylor coming off a double dong the other day. He's now another one 30 and a hundred again this year. Uh, anything else in like the 4k range that, that sticks out to you? Uh, no, Josh Naylor was the only other one for me in that 4k range too. I like, I like, there's, I think there's a couple other cheaper guys too, but yeah, he was, he was the only one that stuck out. What do we got? Who do we got in the in the value tier? I think Tristan Casas. I think okay. 3,800 is too cheap for this guy. He's just got crazy okay. power. I think he's he's starting to warm up a little bit. He's getting you know more games under his belt. Really like him there. Uh, I also think Reese Hoskins is way too cheap right now. He's actually starting to hit the ball again. He's, yeah, you got to go down a ways here. He's 3,000. <laughs> and he's hitting the ball well. Like all, He's had a really cold streak, so that's why his price is down here. But now you're getting him for this. Like, why is it all of a sudden this dropped down to 3000 That's That seems crazy to me. Yeah, I mean, and, and it's not like when you look at the version of Zach Allen, this hasn't been – he's been good in in pockets this year, um, Gallon. Like, three of four starts has been really good. But he's had some monster blow-ups. So um, yes. I, I'm, I'm definitely a little bit interested in, in Hoskins for just, like, what you said, the power. It's uh, you're playing him for a cheap home run. So, I agree on that front. I would uh, tip my hat to Kyle Manzardo, who he's looking continued. great. He he's has looked reading the ball right now. He looks dude, locked in at the plate, dude. Another example of a player struggling when he originally gets called up, gets sent down, works on things, gets recalled, and suddenly you know he's yeah. getting an everyday opportunity and he's taking advantage of that every day opportunity. Now, unfortunately. It's come at the expense of Big Christmas, but I, you know, I understand it because Manzardo has been obviously better. Um, 
Yeah. That's probably it. Like salute to Nico Cavadas, who seems to be turning things around. Uh, he's had monster power at the minor league level. Um, mm-hmm. And if Verlander can't strike him out, which he's done a lot, then, you know, there is a home run equity attached to Cavadas name and, and he's been hitting fourth. So that, that would be the only other name I have. You ready to move on to second? Yeah, absolutely. Let's go to the top of the second base position where, uh, you know, some, some big names are there. I don't know if we're going to spend up, but you can tell Marte $6,000 against Colin Ray. Um, Jose Altuve gets Tyler Anderson 5,200 as long as he keeps his shoes on and Marcus Semyon $5,100. Any interest there or is this just a position like, nah, I'd rather like live in the 4k and under range. Yeah, I, I don't really see a world where I'm using anyone above Glaber Torres. Like, he's probably yep. the top price second baseman I'm using today, and he's only 3900 <laughs> That's probably – I probably agree with that. Um, I guess I'd see where they hit Massey. They've been moving his lineup position around. Yeah. They've him fourth recently against righties. Like, if he's hitting fourth, then I would, like – it would be a consideration – in a in a royal stack, like I would not play, I would not play Michael Massey, you know, alone. But I would play him in a stack. If you're not paying above Glaber Torres, who are the names you are paying for at second or spending down on at second base? I should say. Yeah, there's honestly the weird thing is there's not a ton of names lower that I love today. Either, <laughs> you, a lot so of you just, just so you just hate the position. Just yeah, I hate, hate second base. Okay, uh, right. like the the one really that sticks out to me is Brendan Donovan. Uh, where yes. I actually like he's continues to hit well, is in a good yes. matchup. So like, honestly, it like, I'm probably using Glaber Torres or Brendan Donovan. And I don't know, maybe you have other opinions you can sell me on someone, but right now my thoughts, it's one of those two is going into my lineup. Yeah. I mean, I don't have like anything groundbreaking to like tell you right now. Um, like I've loved Otto Lopez recently. I would say yeah. that would be the other guy that I would suggest. Charlie Morton is, you have no idea when you're getting a good Charlie Morton versus a bad Charlie Morton. And that comes with like him being 40, right? Like he is a 40 year old that um, has obviously logged a lot of innings in the, in the later stages of his career. I don't look as low power lately, a lot of speed this year. So um, $3,400, I would be good with him. Um, And then I wanted to see if we had, yeah. um, Chris Taylor against a lefty. It's not like exciting. I understand it. He's been fine um, against left-handed pitching lately. It has He will not play against a righty. And then Kike, um, who's been just a power bat against lefties. That is the only thing he's going to do. He hit a home run the other day with a uh, – oh, no, they're throwing um, they're throwing a righty, aren't they? They're throwing Belozo. I'm – oh, no, no. no, no you're, yeah, it's uh, Freeland. I am. It's Freeland. Braves are against Belozo. Uh, yeah, Dodgers are against Freeland. You, you're good. <laughs> Henry – it's been a long week okay it's been a long week um so yeah that i would just throw like cheap dodgers into that sure. equation but that's yeah that's really come, come play for dodgers because you can probably stack them with other dodgers that you feel pretty confident into so yeah i, I could see that yeah they're they're part of my five stack if i want to get like if i do want to get a mookie or a otani or or try to figure out a way to get both right like that that would be the direction um yeah. I that's would the only reason you're playing either of those two dodgers like correct. that's not that's a correct. one-off play or something it has yeah. to be part of a stack <laughs> correct um third base where you could play some one-offs uh we have jose ramirez 6200 rafael devers 54 jazz chisholm jr 53 uh and the probably the, the hottest of all of them right now manny machado um five thousand dollars what do we got here in the 5k and up tier at third yeah, I'm, I'm going to Machado. Uh, I just think all of the other three are just looking kind of cold right now. Espe- like if I, the other two, I'm really not using. Jose Ramirez, I would consider. Devers and Chisholm, yeah, I don't nice. think I can do right now with how cold they are. Uh, yeah. But really, I'm probably just going straight to Manny Machado, who's super hot, only 5K. Garrett Crochet has been not dominant for quite a bit now. So yeah, I think he's easily my favorite here. Yeah, and again, like whatever you, whatever your opinion on Garrett Crochet is, I mean, he's a, obviously a high strikeout guy. This is one, not the spot for strikeouts because they strike out um, less than anybody else across baseball. But also, he's only limited to four innings. That's his yeah. max. So you're getting the worst bullpen in baseball for the for the duration of the game. So exactly, um, I, I like Machado quite a bit. Five thousand. I agree with you on on those other calls. 
Uh, when we drop below four thousand dollars, I don't necessarily see anything that I love. Like Royce Lewis is whatever right now. He seems broken. Uh, McMahon lefty lefty. Eh. Um, Berger is always a, is a home run waiting to happen. Homered on Thursday. Unihano's obviously been like producing runs in in crazy. Like what is what is your opinion on the four K range in general? Like who stands out to you? Uh, it probably is Eugenio Suarez. Uh, I just think a, a lot of the others again are, are really cold, and what we've been seeing out of Suarez right. has been crazy. Like obviously the yes. homers have have stopped recently, but like he's still been hitting the ball, and yes. so like I wouldn't be surprised if all of a sudden he gets another two homer game. Like he's just been looking really good at the plate. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, I don't really have much else. Like Bregman at forty five, I think is fine. He Muncy, also again, has- I, even the lefty lefty, I'll go back to the Dodgers and, you know, take this huge power because how far is Freeland going to go? He might get some righties in a bad uh, Rockies bullpen too, and he can just crush the ball for 4K. So, Also, the, the last part you just mentioned is super confusing, no? He's yep. $4,000. I mean, if yeah. you look at, like, recent games, obviously, like, trending downwards in terms of price, but why? But I mean, he's going to – yeah, he said he said a really good stretch. I mean, in in general, like I don't know, maybe maybe I'm missing something with Max Muncy, but I would also play him lefty lefty because you are obviously going to face off against a, a bad Rockies bullpen after that. Um, yep. So I agree. Uh, when we dip below four thousand uh, dollars, oh, Yoan Moncada back. Salute to Yoan Moncada. Uh, oh. Didn't realize he was even back. Um, yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, okay, sure. Um, what uh, is there any value plays here at third? Uh, yeah, I think, uh, you know, Jace Young, the Tigers have been like batted him lead off. Oh, no, Jace, Jace. Like, Jace. Okay, okay, okay. I'm, uh, yeah, not Josh. I'm all the way down to the, the cheap brother here nice. and Jace because, uh, you know, I think the, the matchup should be, could be okay. And if they're batting him lead off is the thing, like if, if they're not doing that, I don't know how much value there is, but like, if for some reason they decide to bat him lead off again, could be a fun play. My, my one concern with most Tigers that are not Riley Green or, like, Terry Carpenter is that they're all just being pinch hit for. All yeah. of them. They just have no. – they have – A.J. Yeah. Hinch is a, is a maniac. We know that. Like, A.J. Hinch has been this way forever. He is so matchup depend – like, matchup based. And, like, yeah, Jay Strong might get two at-bats. And if he doesn't yeah. hit you – if he doesn't get a, a hit, a steal – or hitting a run like he did that last game, I mean, you you are just drawing dead, and his his day is over, right? So no, that would be my that would be my only concern with like most tigers. Like people get excited when there's a lefty, like oh, I get to use, and I used to be this way. Andy Abanez, yeah, a lefty killer. It's like, well, Andy Abanez is going to get two at bats. That's that's what he's going to get, and then he's going to whether or not he's twenty four hundred, you need to have him get it done in those two at bats, and then before he's uh, done for the day. So. Yep. I don't I'm not I'm not like I'm not trying to like crap on the play. I'm also just like a little a little trepidation there. I it's not, You're right. it's not yeah. for me. No, totally. And I get it. Yeah. Uh I and again, I think there's a chance he's not even the lineup. The only way I'm right. considering him is if they are starting him and it is like Getting he's leaving. batting first. If it's not that scenario, then it, it's definitely not worth it for me. I don't think um Donovan Solano, I think is the only other name I'll Donovan throw out Solano. there. Because uh, yep. he's another one that, like, maybe he gets pinch hit for once Crochet's out and, like, Roddy's on the mound. Um, but I, again, I think he could actually stay in there and he just hits lefties well. So, yeah, he's typically played. He's typically played when yeah. he starts. Like, when he starts, he's usually finishing games. Um, yep. Solano, you can also, obviously, you can play Kike here too. Someone we've talked about already. Emmanuel Rivera will be in the lineup probably. Um, definitely will be in the lineup if you want to, like, just fully punt the position. Uh, shortstop, Gunner, Bobby Witt, Trey Turner, possibly Lindor. I know um, he didn't play Thursday. That was reported early that he wouldn't play. But there's, n- I think the maybe the telling thing was that when the reporters asked um, the manager, he said Thursday. He will not play Thursday. But he didn't say, like, oh, he's going to miss the next. Could get the return of Francisco Lindor here. Tovar's 54. Don't know why. That's obviously Coors Field bump still that – even though they're not yeah. in cores. Um, Correa, 5K. What do you make of this 5K and up shortstop? Yeah, I think I think the most interesting is Correa, who's just like on a hot streak. Um, 
I think the rest of them, I just don't know if I want to pay that much for what's been like, they're all great. They're stars. I'm not going to like argue against you if you want to go there, but I think Correa's just been looking really good. If not, you know, I think you go Willie Adamas, who is, he has a righty at home, but here's the real question. Do you really want to pay for any of these guys when you can still get Tommy Edmond against a lefty for cheaper? No. Um, also would like to note, and I don't know why this was the case for Thursday. Uh, he was outfield only randomly on Thursday, which again, you know, like I, I said it to, I said it to John on the, for Thursday slate, that is like, that took away the, not that I wouldn't play Tommy Edmund against a lefty against anyone, but it like kind of took away the, the allure of like Edmund because the positional eligibility, because now like not having the shortstop like MPE really hurt him. Um, yep. But like, you're right per dollar. He's the best shortstop on the board per, per dollar. He's the best shortstop on the board because he has the eligibility back. Right. Like, I wouldn't say that about him in the outfield. I would say he's a good play, but like there's probably 10 other guys that look just like him at in the outfield at like similar price or cheaper mm -hmm. where because he has the shortstop eligibility, that's the best per dollar play there is. Absolutely. Like there, there's a lot of good value outfielders that like you could go to where shortstop, it's just not as deep. So yeah, if, if you can play him, you're putting him at shortstop. And if you were to lose that, he's way less enticing, but here, at this position, I think he's just so by far the standout guy against a lefty. Dude, I think without looking, and I'm just going to look it up now, but before I look it up, I think he's hit, and I know he double-donged against a lefty back-to-back -back days. I'm pretty sure, I mean, I know for a fact his last home run came against a lefty as well. I think all six have come against lefty. No, I, I'm pretty oh, sure. All he's definitely like still well over a 1300 OPS against lefties on the season. For sure. And and that is like large part to sample, but like because of the sample size, but also because he is just good against lefties. Uh, four of the six have come against okay. lefties. So yeah. uh, just and, casually hitting 440, as you mentioned, um, with a yeah 1379 OPS. So closer to 1400 than he is uh, 1300. So you're yeah. wrong. Haha, <laughs> you're wrong. 1400. Okay. Um, <laughs> but five sixty-nine yeah. against righties. So yeah, he has two of those six homers against righties, but like pretty much horrible against yeah. righties, and yeah. the best hitter in baseball against lefties. Right, right. Makes makes you wonder sometimes, like if he just gave up switch hitting, um, if he would just be better all all around from the right side, right? Like just yeah. makes you wonder. Um, yes. do the do the Cedric Mullins and yeah, do the yeah exactly. And all of a sudden, be way better. Bingo. Um, let's continue. Uh, let's move away from our, our love for Tommy Edmund and down down the list. I think like it has to mention it's not the best spot, uh, but Luis Angel Acuna has obviously been awesome. Um, if there's no Lindor, like again, it is a tough, 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 tough matchup. Christopher mm -hmm. Sanchez is a very good baseball pitcher. He is awesome. Um yeah. This guy has also been awesome since being called up, and he's 3,300. Is there any – would you put anything into Acuna? Um, or, like, just because Chris Sanchez is so good, probably just move on and find a different value? Yeah, it is, it is tough with the matchup just because, like, with, with Christopher Sanchez, like, he limits the homer so well. That everything on the ground. Limits uh, the everything on the ground. So, like, even if he gets to him, that still, like, dampens your upside quite a bit. But, yeah, it's 3,300, and you're talking about the guy – five hits and two homers over the last two games. Yep. So yeah, if he's, if he's in the heart of that lineup, I could totally see going there. Um, is there anything else you would consider at shortstop? Uh, Trevor story is starting to show a little life at the plate. Uh, yes. so, you know, for, for this cheap, I think he's still as someone that can, you know, two homers, four steals in the last 10 games. He still has yes. that power speed upside. So now he's actually like showing some life finally at the plate uh, at this price. I, I'm happy to go there. Yeah, um, no problem. Thirty two hundred. I mean, obviously, long long gone are his uh, numbers from his Colorado days, but uh, he is just needs to stay healthy, and maybe we'll see. We'll we'll see, right? We we just don't yeah. know because he just not, has not been healthy over the last few. Exactly. Uh, Saluto Orlando Garcia against a right handed pitcher. Uh, that's yeah. been his bread and butter this year, uh, but I I don't I don't see anything else. Um, yeah, and I'd happily five minutes Dak Braves against Bayoso. Okay. 
Like, Agreed. yeah. Agreed. Fully agree. Uh, let's head in to the outfield uh, to finish off the show. We will, for those tuning in for the first time, build a lineup here. Just an example lineup to, to you know, kind of tie together Henry and I's thought processes as, as we have gone through the show. Um, but let's let's finish, let's talk outfield. Uh, the Yankees move away from um, Seattle and into Oakland. Both guys uh, sub 7K. We mentioned Otani's over seven. Uh, we were wondering what the bets price is. 62. Schwarber 61. Uh, what what if anything stands out to you? So uh, 6K and up. Uh, I mean, yeah, obviously we've loved our, talked our love of the Dodgers. So like, if you can fit at least one of these guys in there, like I don't hate it. I think I probably still prefer the Yankees actually, just cause like judge and Soto are finally like coming out of this cold yes. sleep and showing life. Uh, and so this is a good matchup and sure. Yeah. They're moving out at Yankee stadium, going to Oakland, but it, that, for these two, that doesn't matter. I don't care where they are. Like, <laughs> so I, I definitely could see trying to get both of them in a lineup potentially. Yeah. I mean, there's specific guys. It doesn't ballpark is less of a factor than others. So yeah, they're, they definitely are at the top of that list. Um, sub $6,000 like this. Uh, what do we got in the five? What do we got in the five kit here? It looks, it looks pretty appealing. I mean, Brooker, Duran, Corby's been amazing. Uh, Jordan I've, and Kyle Tucker have never shied away from lefty lefty. Like what do we got here in the five kit here? I think the main guys that jump out to me are first Corbin Carroll. He's just been fantastic. Amazing. Yeah, he's been amazing. Like, he's looking like, what we thought we might get out of him for like the full season. It's too bad that didn't happen, but at least we're getting it now. Right. (laughs) Uh, Outside of him, I think again, Ozuna, just I'm taking any Braves here in this matchup. And so Ozuna with the power, um, I think he also stands out. And I think the last one in this year that really jumps out is Tatis. He's just been fantastic. Uh, Also another one that like, man, too bad we didn't get a full season of this, but at least we're getting it now. (laughs) Yeah, I think... um... If you were to ask me right now, just like right now, if you would be like, who is your World Series? I legitimately think that the Padres might be the best team in baseball. I I could absolutely see them making a push. The thing is, too, like their team feels built for the postseason. Dude, their bullpen. It's the bull. Yeah. It's the bull. It's the bullpen. They went out yes. and they, and they literally don't strike out. They don't strike out. They've got the best bullpen in baseball. They have the rotation also. Like they just Correct. have the pieces that you want for October baseball. Yeah, this was the best. This was not even close to the, the best job Preller did um, for this team. And I, I legitimately, I think the Padres represent. That's my hot take of the day. Padres represent the National League, uh, as long, barring no injuries from now until uh, now until you know the start of the postseason, which is literally like. Two weeks from now, yeah. Um, I think the Padres make the World Series. I love your your Tatis call fifty two. He's he's a six thousand dollar player that we're just he's fifty two because you know he wasn't yeah. great pre injury. He but like it has been, and now we get Crochet versus uh, and the White Sox uh, sub five K. I think there's some interesting names right off the bat. Uh, Tay Oscar is going to be popular. He is really really good against lefties, despite. You know, recent struggles against lefties. I think he's really, really appealing. Byron Buxton has been good since returning. Not shying away from Riley Green either. Um, just Corbin Burns has obviously been a shell of himself um, going into a contract year, which, you know, he bet on himself and he's losing a lot of money currently. Um, I think the top of the 4K tier is really interesting. What about the rest of the 4K tier? Like what stands out to you? Uh, yeah, I mean, think if you keep going down, there's still some some good names like Jackson Churio, obviously like t- tough matchup still, but like, I don't know, Brewers continue to be good. Uh, I also think, you know, Michael Harris, I keep talking about Braves, but like Michael Harris has also just been showing some really good power recently. Two uh, bombs, two bombs yeah. uh, on Thursday, four in the last four, three. Four in the last I three. Mean, dude, he is really good. He just had a really tough season and then had like really tough start and then an injury and it's been really good since he's been back yeah exactly and again in a matchup i love even if he hadn't been doing what he's doing right now like this is kind of absurd and you get him for 4200 right agreed i think michael harris is a great great play at 42 um carpenter 43 adolis has been a little better and we we've talked ad nauseum about kirby and the seattle staff on the road just in general has Mm -hmm. not been the same staff as they they've been in seattle um 
that would probably, I mean, like you could Parker play Meadows well. and Lane yeah. Thomas, both at 4,100. I think both those guys, like I, the entire Tigers outfield, like Kerry Carpenter, yes. Parker Meadows, Riley Green, you, you could build the outfield of all three of them and I'd be happy with it. Yeah. And you'll get them. And, and I think the, the, the attractiveness of the Tigers is you'll get them at less than 5% on a big slate. Just like thinking people are like, Oh, I'm not going to attack Corbin Burns. He's the most expensive sure. pitcher on the slate. Right. It's like, that's like the DFS mindset. Not like, Corbin Burns hasn't really been great for two straight months, right? Yeah. So I, I agree. He's been legitimately like the best team in baseball over the last like six weeks. So bizarre, bizarre thing for you to say, but it's like true. just to hear it. No, no, just to hear it. It's just, yeah. it, is, it is bizarre. Uh, going in currently, we're off Thursday and they are currently tied with the Twins. Although they do not have the, the tiebreaker, the Twins had the tiebreaker. If the season ended today, they would not make it. Uh, they are currently tied for the final uh, wild card spot. So. Uh, that should be fun, fun, fun baseball. I think uh, Detroit, yeah, Detroit starting this series with Baltimore is very interesting because pretty interesting way things could end there if, like, Detroit goes and sweeps Baltimore. I mean, just, yeah. just saying. I mean, that would be, ooh, that would be, we'll, we'll see. Uh, we'll, we won't get ahead of ourselves here. Obviously, you know, you talked to Corbin. Uh, Lane Thomas has been amazing lately. Um, mm-hmm. I know it says 256, but extended to, like, 15, 20 games, he's been great. Awesome. Um, four thousand and under. Anything specific? Uh, I mean, Profar is four thousand. I don't know why his price continues to decrease, but he's been really good all year. Uh, mm-hmm. Signs of life from World Series MVP Jorge Soler. I mean, yeah. he'll hit second. You're right. Yes. The if you're ranking, it's very hard to pick, but like your five man stack between Dodgers and Braves, because like I feel yeah. like it's pretty clear cut that those. One of those two are going to be your top stack of the day. Yes. You, you, the Braves are very affordable with like just looking at Solaire and looking at Michael Harris like as a baseline. And then Olsen is not really expensive. Like that, Solaire looks really good at this price tag. Yeah. I mean, yeah, the fact that you can here take Solaire at 3,900 and Michael Harris at 4,200, both with like over 1,200 OPSs over the last 10 games yes. against what I think is the worst pitcher on the slate. Like, it's that simple. (laughs) Yeah, it it really is. Uh, There's nothing else that we need to expand on. Um, Let's expand our uh, outfield depth here. What else do we like um, in the value tier? Uh, Yeah, Uh, Jesus Sanchez. Uh, Again, you talked about Morton being someone you can kind of attack, and he's looked pretty good recently. Uh, He he has some power. He's been good, but this guy. Uh, yeah, right on. You want to add another Braves outfielder in there? Yeah, if uh, if he's if he's getting the start, he just continues to do so for this Braves team, which is like shocking. I like if you had told me that Loriano would be producing for the Braves at the beginning of the season. A, Loriano is not that good. B, where is he going to have room to play at the, in the Braves outfield? But here we are. Loriano is fantastic for the Braves. <laughs> wow, C is not Royds. Okay, I'll I'll be the I'll be the bigger person. I'll say it. Royce, C. Hey, maybe, but you know no, what? no. I'm just gonna just just spec spec and just we're not actually we're not actually saying that he's taking steroids. Yeah. It's, it's not something we're saying. Uh, someone who may be taking steroids. Uh, it looks like it at yeah. least. Paven Smith has been. He's been amazing. I'm I'm assuming they're gonna continue to play him against righties even when Lourdes Gurriel returns. Yeah. Um, no reason to think he would be out of the lineup. I know, like. A lot of this production came in one game. He had the three home runs, eight RBIs, had the chance for the uh, the the grand slam. Uh, he had the the home run cycle chance where he came up with the bases loaded in that fourth at bat. He didn't obviously come through, but I love Paven Smith thirty five hundred if he's going to hit in the middle of this lineup. Totally. Another one that why does he not have first base eligibility? Show he your time first base el- eligibility and has never played first base. Paven Smith has played first base like 20 games this year. Yes. Why why is it gone? He has had multiple games, or it's been first base outfield for quite a while, and obviously he would be an elite, like one of the most locked players probably in like cash and and single entries that you'd find if he was first base outfield just because of the MPE. Um, But like, yeah, I, I... I don't disagree. It's just another kind of thing that, you know, you get to the end of the year and randomly people are like 
losing and, and gaining eligibility so that you don't really understand. Um, yeah, um, unfortunate for him because it is a great play. Unfortunate for us because, like, obviously we'd kind of prefer it if it was we could play him in, in either spot where we don't yeah. have to just lock him in the outfield. I mean, uh, but so many good outfield plays. Yeah, that. still, yeah, right. And that and that's the that's the position scarcity I was talking about with Edmund too. Like yep. because we have Tommy Edmund at shortstop, you named six guys at forty one hundred. That Tommy Edmund. If that was the yeah. case, like, I mean, we might still play him because we like the Dodgers. But it's no, probably not, Edmund would still be going in there. But yeah, it, but it's not as it's not as clear. Then. Yeah, it's not as clear cut as it is with him having shortstop eligibility. Uh, yep. Something clear cut right now. Jason Dominguez looks like he's waking up at the plate. Um, big home run the first game in Seattle. Two runs and a stolen base the next game. He is really, really patient. Uh, mm -hmm. He walks at least once a game. Multiple hits in the Thursday slate as well. That obviously is not showing up well as we're recording. Um, we've kind of just been waiting for Jason Dominguez to show up. But from a fantasy perspective, this – you know, if he does anything else, he will have a fourth straight double digit fantasy game because he is very multi talented with the power, with the speed, just with the, the offense. Um, any thought to Jason Dominguez, 34? Yeah, fully agree. Obviously, brings in that power speed, which helps that like he can put up fantasy points really quick because of that. And yeah, he's looked good. Like, if you just look at these numbers, you're probably going to go past it because, like, oh, it's not very good. Correct. You're right. He's, like, if you've been watching any of his at bats, he has looked really good. Like he's looking patient at the plate. He's hit yes. into some loud outs. Like I think he's had yes. some bad luck too. Like he has been looking really good at the plate. And I wouldn't be surprised if we see him go on a bit of a tear here at the end of the season and, you know, really lock himself into this lineup for the postseason. Yeah. Just, you know, people probably forgot or you know, maybe didn't, didn't even know when he was called up last year, not only did he obviously hit his home run in his first at bat off Justin Verlander, uh, he was hitting third for the Yankees. Like, it, yeah. and so, it, you know, guy just got called up hitting third. So that that's the type of talent we're dealing with. Uh, this Seattle series, he's really broken out with some some elite at-bats. Um, needs to work on his glove. Not very good in the outfield, but uh, is a is a very good hitter. Uh, any other values that we're going to be taking a look at here? Uh, Mike Estremski is on a tear right now. He uh, has. We do like Waka today, and Giants have been bad, but like, you know. It's a home run, it's a home run thing. He's yeah. hitting home runs. He's hitting home runs. Yep, totally. Which against, you know, Walker can give up some homers, but like in Kaufman, it's not the best place, but still 3,200 and he's hitting homers. Agreed. Um, I would throw on Hill Martinez in there with Quan um, on the IL. They've been leading him off. You know, don't, it's not like a, I'm not like, it's not a lock and load for me, but he is leading off in a good spot. I think Garrett Mitchell, 3,100 makes a lot of sense. He's Hunter Renfro, him. MJ Melendez, both are super cheap for the Royals. Um, Melendez down to 2,800. He'll hit in the middle of that lineup against Black. I think that's a a really nice play in the mid tier or in the in the deep deep dungeons of the value tier. Um, I don't think there's anything else. Do you do you have anything else that you'd want to uh, throw a dart at? We could bring up our final brave, Jared Kelnick. <laughs> if he's on yes. the lineup, you know, he's cheap where would you rank him? Where would you rank him amongst the four Braves outfielders? Uh, I mean, I think he's, he's fourth of the four still, but like, if you can't, if you want a full stack and like, you can't afford a Zuna and you're taking, you want a bunch from them and you go Solaire, Harris and Kelnick instead, because you need to save the money. Sure. Oh, wait, wait, I take that back. Five Braves outfielders because Loriano exists. I, I kind of just, um, Oh yeah. Lori, goodness. Yeah. So I don't, so what, one of them will be off. Yeah, one of them's not starting. It, yeah, huh. Kelnick might not be starting. Loriano might not be starting. Not sure. Even with the righty, it's not certain which one it will be. Yeah, um, you could probably pencil. You'll pencil in the top three for sure, and then yeah. we'll see between Loriano and Kelnick, and you know, take it from there. Um, yeah, I like it. Let's let's get a lineup built. Um, I think Musgrove is kind of just a, a lock and load for us. Yeah, and I mean, we liked. We liked Herder. We liked Waka. I'd be good because we can afford Braves if we wanted to double spend with Garrett Cole. Like, what direction do you want to go with our SP2? Or do you want to just come back to SP2 and we'll do the rent fill the rest of our lineup? Yeah, let's come back because I think, yeah, we have an option both at like high, middle, low. So let, let's kind of see how the rest of the lineup comes together. 
I'm assuming Michael Harris and like Tommy Edmond were like two places that we both that we'd like want to start. Um, yeah. Edmond at short, Harris in the outfield. Um, what else? What other positions do we want to just knock down? Do we like spending up at first? Do we like Olsen or Freeman? Is that like a direction that we want to take? Like what? Where's another position that you're just comfortable? Like let me let's play who this guy. Uh, yeah, I think probably here at first, why don't we spend, we spend up? I think Olsen's the one I prefer, but I, Agreed. yeah, either one are good. Agreed. Um, second base was definitely a position we'd like to spend out. I'm very good with just playing Brendan Donovan. If that was the direction we'd want to go, he is super safe. Yep. Uh, and he has a good matchup against a struggling pitcher. You know, if he, fa- if he has to face Emmanuel class in the ninth, like, you know, that's a zero, but, uh, you know, as long as he gets something before that, uh, I like that play. Um, out, do we want to play another Braves outfielder in Solaire? Or do we want to play Teoscar? Or do we want to play try to get Mookie? Like, what? What's your take on the out on the rest of the outfield spots? I think we probably want another Brave in there, whether Agreed. it is Solaire or Ozuna. I think because I think I think we also we could go Max Muncy at third, get another Dodger in there because third's kind of like. There's not a whole lot else going on, which means I because I think I want to get a lot of Dodgers and Braves in here. So, yeah. If we did Ozuna, we probably couldn't get a Dodger. If we went Solaire, we. Yeah. So, I mean, you could go Solaire to Oscar as like. That's probably. A that's probably. Yeah, that's probably the the reasonable. And we just really um, commit to this Dodgers and Braves mashup. I mean, they're. I mean, I think you and I are both on the same wavelength. Like they're the best play on the board. Um, yes. Catcher. I mean, we have to. We're, we'll have to punt this position. Um, yep. Pajes, Pajes maybe to correlate with our Brendan Donovan. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're a couple hundred off of uh, Garrett Cole, but it does put us on Michael Waka, and I feel like that's. Pretty much all you can ask for, right? I mean, we got yes. the two our two favorite teams with our favorite pitcher and our favorite mid tier pitcher, right? Yep. That's and basically. I think if you like really need to want to double spend up and go Musgrove and Cole, then just like switch off of Olsen and you know go to Josh Agreed. Naylor or somebody, and now you can afford him. Like, well, well, you could just simply go to Freddie Freeman, who ha- right? Isn't that get us? Oh, that would get you to- enough. Honestly, that's probably the way to go. Then, yeah. So if you want to double spend your pitcher. Uh, the way to do it for the audio audience, Joe Musgrove, Garrett Cole, Pedro Pajes, Freddie Freeman, Brendan Donovan, Max Muncy, Tommy Edmond, Michael Harris, the second, Tyascar Hernandez, and Jorge Soler. And if you wanted to, instead of Freeman, play Matt Olson, we're just making a, a two-man swap. We're going Olson and Waka. That would be the only uh, the swap. Olson and Waka versus Garrett Cole and Freddie Freeman, which, you know, Garrett Cole, Freddie Freeman definitely sounds better than like Michael Waka, Matt Olson, but also, you know, if you want more Braves, the Olsen yeah. route is the way to go. So um, I love it. Uh, again, guys, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel as the season winds down. Uh, these podcasts will, but you can get all these podcasts for all different sports. We still have all the NFL seasonal stuff. We have all, every day live streams and podcasts. We have the NFL DFS podcast with Howard Bender and Jonathan Pemba that come out um, weekly. Uh, I think they come out usually like Thursday, Friday. Um, so you can subscribe to the channel and you won't miss that. In about a month, uh, the 22nd of October, basketball starts. You'll see me and John and Pemba uh, for some hoops uh, podcasts nightly, Monday through Friday. So please subscribe to the channel. The seven-day free trial, Henry, that is not seven days any longer. Still going up. We're like we're still just sending out this seven-day free trial. Just telling Blake, yo, come get your free trial. Yeah. Like it's free. And after that, it's 19 bucks with code let's go. Or go to, you know, if you scan this QR code on the screen right now, or go to www.fantasyalarm.com slash win. Um, I mean, there's nothing that you won't like in those seven days, and, and you'll probably re-up, but you can try us for seven days for free right now. If you scan that QR code, or if you go to fantasyalarm.com slash win, you know, if you don't have a, a, a scannable phone or whatnot, um, please. Come, come try us. We'll stay forever. You'll be part of the family forever. Like myself, uh, and and you can find us, and like Henry, and you can find us on Twitter before we get out of here one more time, at Henry13Wilson13, and at the underscore real underscore grande. Big salute to Henry uh, for joining me on today's show. 
Big salute to you guys, the FN Nation, who's held us down all year long and showed up all year long to these shows um, as my, my box is significantly bigger and, and we'll fix that uh, a little bit. But uh, big salute to you, Henry. Big salute to the FN